Oh my god, what's he up to now? This is all about the uh, the Great Chasty Boulevard Coaster Hill here in uh, Seattle, not too far from my place down here in South Seattle. I've known about this run since the uh, 1950s, even when I was a little kid, we used to push our single speed bicycles all the way up to the top of the hill and just so we could coast all the way down. It's the best coast within the city limits of Seattle and I'm absolutely astounded that more skateboarders, longboarders, kick scooter riders, and bicyclists don't do the thing. But all the way from the 50s and our first generation skateboards, it has remained almost totally undiscovered. So we're going to take the lid off of it and let you see it. The vehicle I'm going to use today is this crazy thing, the Mogo Scooter, which is kind of a crossbreed between a bicycle and a skateboard. It starts up by uh, Beacon Avenue South, close to the Veterans Administration Hospital, which is the local landmark goes kind of lengthwise down Beacon Hill and comes out at ML King Way down in Rainier Valley. Uh, the entire distance of the coast is just about one mile and I checked it with the GPS and the speedometer on this thing. Now a funny story about that place. Back in the late 50s or early 60s all us guys pushed our bicycles or single speed bikes up to the top and came ripping on back down that thing and I uh, clanked handlebars with my buddy next to me and I ended up going off of the cliff. I flew into uh, off of the cliff and up through the trees through the top of a big maple tree and broke I don't know how many branches on the way down which actually broke my fall. Landed in some brush which broke my fall even farther and the guys came scrambling down the hill and picked me up and dusted me off and said, well, where's your bike? Now we looked around and my bike was about 30 feet off of the ground hanging up in the maple tree. Uh, we tried standing on each other's shoulders and all kind of antics to get up there and get it, but we couldn't do it. So uh, I had to go home and my dad had to scrounge a great big extension ladder and climb up there to where we could get a handhold and get the bike down. And he was not happy with me. He banned me from riding my bicycle for a month and put a big lock chain on it down in the basement. But after about a week, I learned how to pick the lock and I was out riding again. So uh, anyhow, I'm going to relive the good old days and go down the great big Chasty Boulevard bicycle coast. Now watch this all you skateboarders, longboarders, and kick bikers, and regular bikers. Uh, you should get out there and try this. When we did it with our skateboards it was pretty rugged because the, state, the skateboards of the late 50s and early 60s had the composite wheels which were hard as rocks. Now the street has been resurfaced who knows how many times since that since the 50s and 60s and today's modern skateboards with their rubber wheels should have no problem negotiating. So let's climb on this sucker and go do it. I am pushing my bicycle up the Great Chasty Avenue bicycle coast or my scooter I should say. This is the spot where the uh, incident happened that I uh, flew off of the edge of the pavement went over the cliff and uh, ended up with my scooter caught or not my scooter back then it was my single speed bike caught about 35 feet off of the ground in a maple tree. And you can see it's quite a cliff. It's a long way down there all the way to ML King Way. So I uh, 
I'm going to do this again and blow the lid off of Seattle's great best kept secret as far as downhill coasting is concerned. Now they have installed a chain link fence on this area and that was not to keep idiots like me from flying off of the uh, edge but uh, illegal dumping became a huge problem here and the chain link fence seems to have stopped it. So I'm going to continue pushing my way up the hill. Okay, here's the orientation as to where we are. This is the intersection of Beacon Avenue South and Alaska Street, and there is the big landmark that sticks up like a sore thumb, which is the VA Hospital across their parking lot. This is Sunday, so the lot is empty. Down this way, it's the intersection of Beacon Avenue South and South Alaska Street, which on the other side of the street becomes the intersection of Beacon Avenue South and Chasty Boulevard. The next block up is the intersection of Beacon Avenue and Columbian Way, which is a very busy intersection. Right down there is the intersection of Beacon Avenue South and Columbian Way. And we're at the intersection of Beacon Avenue South and Chasty Boulevard. Beacon and Chasty. And we're gonna blow the lid off of the Great Seattle Bicycle Coast. There's a slight uphill rise, but after you get to the top of this little rise, it's downhill all the way to ML King Way. It's uh, well over a mile, and I've got a GPS going to track it. Okay, we're at the uh, fence, which marks the south boundary of the Beacon Hill Golf Course, otherwise known as the Jefferson Park Golf Course. And a uh, few out there enjoying the day playing some cow pasture pool. I saw one guy cheat. I saw him move his ball. <laughs> but who cares? <clears throat> so we're going to climb on this sucker and do the Great Chasty Avenue Coast. There is possibly just a tiny little bit of uphill up to that curve. But once we go past that curve, we're over the edge and it's downhill all the way to ML King Way, over a mile. I'm going to double check the distance on this. I have the bicycle type speedometer reset and I also have the GPS in the back basket. So we'll take a look and see what the uh, how far this coast actually is. Nope. Looks downhill to me. Climb on her and go. A few foot pumps. And we're over the edge. This part here is fairly mild, but we'll pick up speed. Dumping can still be a problem here because it's such a seldom used street. Okay, we're into it. nine miles an hour and accelerating. There are some holes on here that can throw you, so you got to watch out. Right, heads up. 12 miles an hour, and if I wasn't using the brakes, I'd be ripping. This street's use as a commuter route 
has been greatly diminished by the building of the link light rail. It was never heavily used to begin with, but it's even less so now because when they built the Mount Baker light rail station at the intersection of King and Rainier, they reconfigured the intersection and when you come all the way to the bottom at King Way, you can only make a right hand turn which puts you headed away from the downtown area. So uh, it's very seldom used. just a few local people and I'm just really amazed that the local skateboarders, longboarders, scooter riders and bicyclists don't use this thing more. This was pretty rough when I was a kid, but this street has been uh, repaired and resurfaced who knows how many times since the 50s and 60s when I used to coast it. I used to be coming down on this thing with the old-fashioned skateboards with their hard-as-rock wheels was a real challenge. Anymore, this kind of reminds me of my Air Force days. This is like bringing a a big cargo plane in for a very uh, gradual approach, easy landing. Oh, 20 miles an hour. Better slow her down a bit. Now, oh, this is a good smooth stretch. Let her rip. There are some holes that can throw you, so ride heads up. We're slowing a little bit because this is fairly fast, uh, fairly flat. South Della Street, which also goes down to King, and you can turn either way, but it's very, very awkward and a very, very poor commuter route. So, like I say, this doesn't get used much except by the few people who live here. keeping her around 10 miles an hour. I don't want to go much faster than that because I ain't young as I used to was. Don't bounce off the pavement like I used to. There's a, oh that's a bird. Look out Mr. Robin. Okay, we're gonna do a right bank and bring this thing in for a landing on the floor of Rainier Valley at ML King Way and the Mount Baker light rail terminal. One point zero three miles. Same on GP 